Welcome, Nicole. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, where are you? Are you in London? Are you in Los Angeles, Hawaii? Where are you these days? What's up, Mark? Um, Hi. In my mind, I'm like all over those places, right? But I'm actually in London right now. And I apologize already because there's like there's like a railroad track right above me. So if you hear rumbling, it's just because it's like right a railroad track. <laughs> Totally understand. You know, the James Bond movies have railroad tracks going on too, and it's just part of it. So it's actually really beautiful when you step outside. It's like so stunning. So yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I'm here in London and it's sunny weather. It's never been more gorgeous and everybody's slowly coming out of lockdown and it's just, it's awesome. It's a great time to be here. That's great. You'll have to hit the pubs, the outdoor pubs, if you can try to find air conditioning when you need it. So Exactly. I lived in London for 10 years, so I know what you're going through. Oh my gosh. I, I, that's my favorite thing is a Sunday roast in a pub. It's just my favorite thing. It you just feels like, nailed it. You nailed it. Right. <laughs> it feels like family. Best. So I even do the Sunday roast on a Saturday. That's how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> I do a Sunday roast every day if I could. I got to fit into this. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. You know, this is an important day for us as we launch the rebranding of our company, Amplify. So just want to dive in and ask you a couple questions. And first of all, you know, I'll put it into context. In, in our industry, empathy has become sort of a focus for brands, right? Especially as they strive to show how we care about our customers, et cetera. And even more so, if you think about, you know, the COVID-19 and, and recent politics and social awareness and things like that. So I'm, I'm super interested to know, you know, what is your perspective on the power of empathy in performing arts nowadays? And what have you learned over the years and how does this play a role in the work that you do today? Wow, that's such an important question. Um, the power of empathy. I think it's everything, right? It's 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 the key. It's what makes all the difference. You know, uh, with, with what I do in the performing arts and with singing, um, you have people who can sing or have great chops or perform, but that if you don't do it with um, with your heart and with your soul and where it counts, and in Hawaii we call it our na'au, right? Like this center part, your instincts, you know, your gut, then, then um, for me, why does it, it, it matters? For me, I think it's so, so important because it's the way you are truly able to authentically connect with people, therefore move people and make all the difference, right? So um, I feel that that's one of my, my greatest gifts is my empathy. Not only am I a neurotic artist, but I'm also a cancer. So um, I don't know, you could say it's like a blessing or a curse, right? To be such an empath. But um, it's kind of, I think that's for me, it's, it's, it's what I, it's where I move from. It's where I create from. It's where I connect from. And it just, like I said, it's key. It makes all the difference um, in the world. And yeah, I've, I've learned a lot over the years through all of my experiences, whether it's been on tours with rock bands or pop bands or musical theater or performing with Andrea Bocelli and um, Andrew Lloyd Webber to, you know, slash 50 cents. Um, yeah. But I think the, the key thing is um, I, I've learned a lot in life, <laughs> right? And I think life ultimately has, has uh, really taught me a lot, the, the highs and lows in life, the ups and downs, the, uh, the dark parts of life and the light parts and the, the happiness and the heartache. And I think going through those struggles and experiencing so much life has really helped me to channel and connect and work and create and emote from that place. Hearing you say those words, I can hear your voice on X Factor, you know, counseling <laughs> people on exactly how how to connect with live audiences. Is, is connecting with a live audience any different than connecting with, you know, a static camera? You have to just put yourself in that mind frame. I am a person who loves a live audience. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love human contact. I love that. But if you put yourself in mindset and you realize I'm in these people's homes and their living rooms and I've gone, I'm just like you, I'm very similar and we're, we're a lot more of the same than we realize, um, then, then you can, you can look into the camera and be like, wow, I have more of a reach and I can really connect with more people this way. So, um, 
yeah, I think that's, that's really cool. That makes sense. So let's ask a little bit about some, you know, business relations, commerce related stuff. I know you are a super influencer by any measure. You're a brand ambassador. You're used to building communities and engaging with audiences and fan bases in a virtual world. And you have years of experience building an audience over time through social media channels. So super interesting to hear how, or if you have any examples of what, what's worked well and maybe what hasn't worked well. We love the bombs, but it, you know, I'm sure everything works well for you, but what has gone right and what has gone wrong for you as a brand ambassador? I'm still trying to figure it out, Mark, right? This is not originally where I came from in the music industry. I'm still trying to figure out, but I have a great team that helps me. And I'm still trying to work out this algorithm thing too that you guys got going on. When someone, when I once heard that the they broke the algorithm, I thought that you know a body part was broken or part of the anatomy, something had happened. So, um, but I, I don't know. I think the best way is is engagement. I think being authentic and things for me like that I'm inspired by making sure people get to see all different aspects of you. I think that's what people loved is to be like, oh, I get to uh, connect with that person. And uh, uh, I usually see her in this limelight, but it's um, more relatable, right? When you, yeah. you're able to connect in that way. So I, I'm embarrassed to tell you that, you know, I do enjoy a little TikTok with, you know, my teenage and 20 year old kid and you are very authentic, right? You're goofy and glamorous yeah. at the same time. So and you, you know what, <laughs> you know what, Mark, I'm going to help you out with the TikToks. I'm sure your, your kids know, but like, it is like, it's all about those trends. They have the trends really work. So you got to jump on those trends. Um, but I think it's learning your audience. And just like I said, I think uh, another key to, to it is, uh, is consistency. So my, uh, thank you for that. My, my daughter has actually, you know, been on a couple different sites and she told me about your clothing line and your fragrance line, right? So I think you've done some work with Misguided and also with Chosen Fragrances. And, you know, just curious as you think about experiences for people on social media, what is it that you, what kind of experience you try to cultivate for your fans or for your customers that are actually trying to engage with your clothing or fragrance lines? What's, what's the feeling you're trying to create? I try to, I want to uplift and empower my fans. I want to do for my fans what I personally need for myself as a girl and as a woman, right? So I want my, whatever I'm a part of, I want it to feel relatable because I'm relatable. I'm the biggest goofball, right? And I want it to feel accessible and affordable. Um, I come from nothing. So really beautiful, humble beginnings. So I know, and it's like, not everybody can afford like, top of the line stuff, but I don't think you can still be elevated with things being accessible and affordable. And I just like to make, it's important for me, it's details. It's just making that extra thing different, special. And for me, whatever I'm a part of, I always think about how do I want my fans or the consumer, how do I want to make them feel? And it's so important to make them feel special, to make them feel one of a kind. That's why I named my fragrance line Chosen, because I was like, Whoever puts this on, I want them to feel, and it's a reminder of them that they're one of a kind. If they're having a whatever day, that they're that there's no one else like them, and that they're chosen. And when they put on my clothes, I want them to feel like almost superhuman. Like these shoulder pads are make me feel a little bit, you know, Yonce, you know, <laughs> like Sasha Fierce. So um, that's important to me because I need that. And um, and I, I am so blessed to have such a beautiful fan base and a lot of great fans out there. And I just, I, like I said, I just want to continue to encourage them and uplift them. And for me, like I said, it's all about the, the details and giving them product that I believe in. So yeah. hopefully they'll feel great in them. That's great. And how about, how about you as a shopper or a consumer? I'll, I'll tell you, you know, my kids obviously were always on social media, but when COVID hit, they stayed on social media you know, they would stay on, let's call it Instagram or Facebook through the entire cycle. So they would do their research on a, on a brand or a product. They'd engage with the product. They'd consume content that's related to the product. They'd even start transacting with the product without ever leaving in Instagram or Facebook. And so, you know, they've stayed on that channel. And now they expect 
to receive, you know, post-transaction support and care with it without having to leave the social media platform. I'm, I'm curious if you got caught up in that same phenomena as a shopper or a consumer, are you also now using social media to get inspiration for what you want to buy or how you want to, you know, consume content? It's just mind boggling how easy they make it, right? It's so easy and so accessible. I mean, you don't have to leave your house, <laughs> you know? Um, I'm a marketer's dream. I'm not going to lie, Mark. I get on Instagram or whatever and they put those ads up and it could be anything and I love it. I am just like, I think I have a, five different harness postures to to help with my posture. I think I got five different ones. I got some microdermabrasion thing for my skin going on in the mail. And my latest thing I think about was like some surfboard that you can surf on for like fitness and balance while you're watching TV in your living room. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use them, but when I saw them, Mark, I was like, I had to have them. I have to have them. These people have them. They look like they love it. I believe it, I believe it. I need that right now. So the next thing you know, Mark, I'm probably in my living room on my surfboard with my microdermabrasion and my posture harness on. Just yeah, yeah. picture that. Did they all show <laughs> up? Every one of those items showed up on time and no um, issues? I've got all the harness things, but I'm still, the other ones haven't shown up yet because I'm traveling. So they probably have shown up. <laughs> You have got to do a TikTok with all of those three products. Could you imagine? Oh my thing. gosh, I do. Um, uh, but you know, I know that it's not like Facebook or Instagram, but I love, um, I love Pinterest. I love anything that has to do with design and interior and home. So I get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest, uh, just even creative inspiration as well. So we've talked a lot about your clothing line and performing arts, et cetera. But I think what people would love to hear about is your work with the Special Olympics. You know, I know this is an important topic for you and you love to give back to the community, but can you give us a feel for what you're doing there and what's going on? Uh, yeah, the Special Olympics. So I'm, I'm really have a great relationship with several charities that I work with. And one of them is I'm a global ambassador for the Special Olympics. Uh, my aunt is Down syndrome. So I just kind of grew up with um, knowing her love and her her light. And she's she's a very special part of our family and her love is very infectious. So selfishly, I got myself involved in the Spe Special Olympics because I was like, I have to be around these people. They bring joy to my life and they make me feel like, they just make me feel really great and I, I wanna give back to them. So I, I really, um, I've had a lot of fun, you know, traveling, going to Australia, going to Dubai, working with um, some of the Special Olympics athletes here in London and, of course, back um, home and in, in America. And um, it just brings me great joy. I think it's so important uh, to to be able to use my platform um, to to speak out, to be a light for causes that I really care about. Um, yeah, because. Yeah, I feel like that's part of my purpose in life, right? Uh, it's part of all of our purposes is, is giving back to inspire change, to inspire evolution, right? Growth, transformation. And a big part of that, Mark, is through education, right? Education, awareness, um, and having a better understanding of, of others, right? And, and really respecting uh, one another's differences and, and embracing them and celebrating them as well. Yeah, that's uh, inspiring to say the least. You sound like the epitome of empathy and caring. And <laughs> so we appreciate uh, everything that you just said. That's excellent. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So we're all excited that you're going to be singing a few songs for us, you know, some, some live music specifically for our event here. I'm just curious, how did you choose the songs that you will be playing for us? Um, well, I know that we only have so much time, so I just chose, um, a couple different songs from different points in my career. One of my, one of my solo songs, a song from the Pussycat Dolls for all my ladies out there. And, um, and then, uh, my last song is a, a really special song to me, uh, uh, because the person who wrote it and sang it is one of my dear friends and mentors and one of the greatest humans ever. So, uh, I think the song is... Yeah, it's a pretty special song and I and I love it. And it pulls on all the heartstrings. So hopefully you guys are able to connect with it. Awesome. Well, that's a great teaser. We're all looking forward to it. And Nicole, thank you 
so much for your time. I know you're super busy jet setting all over the place, but thank you very much for sharing these insights with us and our customers and our partners, et cetera. I think most of us can relate to the kinds of decisions that you've made and, and we can find lessons and inspiration that is relevant to our own brand. So I appreciate you taking the time with us today on a hot, sunny day in London underneath the train track. So. No, I really appreciate it. It's been such a nice conversation, Mark, and I appreciate you just, aside from all the noise and distractions, you just connecting on a real human level, and ultimately that's what it's about, right? Absolutely. Thank you, Nicole. Have a great right. one. Looking God forward to seeing you. the show. Take care.